spectroscopy, the study of spectra, the study of light emitted by objects, is how we figure out what stuff in space is made of, like period. All right. This is how this is how helium was discovered because we were looking at the sun carefully, not with our naked eyes. Don't ever do that. We were looking at the sun, and the sun had some spectral lines, some lines, some fingerprints of certain elements that we could identify. Ooh, there's hydrogen. Ooh, there's oxygen. Ooh, there's iron in the sun. Ooh, but there were some lines that we couldn't identify that we had never seen before. And we guessed maybe it's a new element. We called that new element helium, helios, the Greek word for the sun. That's how we discovered. We discovered the element helium on the sun before we found it on the earth. And we did it through spectroscopy. We can identify elements in a couple of different ways up in space. One is if something is really, really hot. If you have, say, a nebula, and it's just a hot nebula, it's a hot plasma, there's lots of collisions going on, there's lots of energy, then this can make it hot enough to emit light at very specific wavelengths because the atoms and molecules in that nebula get some energy. That is, some of that energy goes to, say, the electrons. The electrons pop up to a higher energy level, hang out there, and then they'll drop down in energy level and they'll emit light as they drop. And because they're dropping at very distinct energy levels, they're emitting light at very distinct energy levels, which means they're emitting light at very distinct frequencies or wavelengths. This is the emission spectra of an element. The lines, the, the wavelengths of light that are emitted when an element or a molecule gets hot. Another thing we can do is when something is blocking light from a distant source. So if you have, say, like a bright star and it's emitting all sorts of light and you put a cloud between us and that bright star, the light from that star has to make it through the cloud to your telescope. But as that light goes through, some wavelengths of light will be just the right energy to make the electrons jump up in energy level. And so the atoms and molecules will, will suck up just that specific wavelength of light while letting other light go through. It's like a gatekeeper. It's like looking around looking, ooh, I like that wavelength. I'll eat that. I'm a very picky eater. <laughs> These the, the molecules and atoms inside of a nebula. And so we what we see here on Earth, is the spectrum of light from the star or background source itself missing some very specific lines, and those very specific lines correspond to the elements and molecules inside the nebula that have sucked up those particular wavelengths. Usually in a typical astronomical situation, we see a combination of both. We see some lines missing because they've been sucked up, but now there's some extra energy floating around in the nebula. The electrons come back down and they emit other wavelengths, and so we'll see some bright emission lines. So usually we see a mix. We can also see light reflected off of objects. Like if you reflect life, light off the surface of a planet, well, we know what the spectrum of the sun is, and we can compare that to the spectrum of the reflected light, and there'll be differences, and we can use that to figure out what the surface of that planet is made of. With planets, with rovers and satellites and stuff, or just rovers, sorry, on surfaces of planets, we can actually use lasers to do the exact same thing. So we, we just, this is how we know what stuff in space is made of. And another big thing we see is motion because when we see that spectrum shifted around blue or red that means that object is moving towards or away from us and this is exactly how we're able to see stars rotate this is exactly how we're able to see galaxies rotate this is how we figured out dark matter and this is how we figured out the expansion of the universe itself thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed please go to patreon.com slash pm to keep all of my education outreach activities going and like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week.